everyone. This is Don Smith. Welcome to another edition of Beyond the Lens, where we talk to everything photography. And today I want to take a look at the new Topaz AI version 2 software. I just finally got it installed the other day on my computer and uh, really, really loving it. There's uh, two items I really like about it that are both in beta, but they seem to be doing a fantastic job. And I think they've just improved the overall autopilot on the software. So uh, before we jump in and take a look, let's, uh, let's go in and take a look at the uh, preference settings for Topaz AI. Uh, basically everything I use in here in the autopilot mode is just default. And I'm not seeing anything in there. I'm not gonna go through everything one at a time. The one thing I have changed is by default, it'll come up default and I have changed that to landscape, uh, especially for this tutorial because I'm gonna be utilizing landscape photos and it does account for the majority of what I do in my business is landscape. The only thing is if I utilize this for portraits or what have you, I have to remember to go back in and reset that to autopilot, which is not, not the worst thing in the world. The other thing I wanted to let you know um, you can see that down here on the bottom, I have seven images. I also have this uh, loaded up in both Lightroom and in Photoshop as a filter, and I can't get multiple images in there. I can only go one at a time. So I'm doing this in standalone mode. And from what I'm seeing, and, and I can't verify this 100%, I believe upscale is only working in a standalone mode. It doesn't seem to want to work for me at least in an auto, in a, excuse me, in a filter mode in Lightroom or Photoshop. In fact, I get a little warning message that comes up and says this, this will not work in a filter mode. But check that and that could be something that I have a setting wrong or that Topaz will adjust in the future. Um, you know, they come up with a lot. They're a great company. They come up with a lot of upgrades. Okay, let's go to work on this. The two things I wanted to show you right off the get-go is adjust lighting and balance color, and they're both beta. So what that means is they're a work in progress. But I happen to think they're pretty cool, right, as it is. And um, I'm going to take this down. What it's done is it's remembered my last settings when I was practicing with these. So on your adjust lighting, it is uh, standardized at 25 and color temperature is standardized at 50 with opacity up to a um, up to 100. By the way, underneath each of these, you can see it says content aware model to improve lighting and address over under exposure, send feedback. So if you would like to send feedback, that's where you go in and do it. So uh, how do I get into this mode? Well, if you come down to the bottom right, I have single mode. And when I do that, this little eyeball comes off to give me a before and give me an after. And then um, I have the swipe mode, which I often use and like, where I can swipe it one way, swipe it the other, see the changes. But I thought for the purpose of doing this video, I would keep it in the side-by-side -side mode. Um, and that's how we're gonna work. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. This is a morning sunrise shoot in Patagonia, uh, Torres del Paine National Park in Chile. And I'm not, this time I'm just going to adjust the lighting because I think it's a little bit dark back in there and you saw how quick that went from here to here. Um, I'm also gonna remove the noise because I'm gonna bring this up in just a moment when it's done removing the noise. I'm going to put this up to uh, 100%. And you can see the noise, hopefully, on your video on YouTube. Um, over here, nice and clean. It did a great job at taking the noise. And the reason I don't want to, let me go back to fit, mess with the color is because this is the beautiful warm color of sunrise. And uh, I don't want to remove that sort of color cast. It may see it as a color cast. In fact, down in here, you can see how much more red or in here than it is up on these peaks. Um, this is indirect light just starting to hit this formation here. This light is swooping in from this side here. And then you can already see the warmth is going out of the um, rocks back in there. 
All right, let's move on to one that I captured a number of years ago. This is Archangel Falls uh, up in Zion National Park. And I'm going to not only adjust the lighting, but I'm going to adjust the color balance. And let's see what it comes up with. And uh, yeah, not too bad. It um, actually, I'm going to say it is a little bad. I'm going to warm that up. Oh, here's why. My color temperature was biased towards, towards blue. Let me get that nulled out to 50 because I saw a little blue come into that water. Um, it's not a huge change. In fact, I'm going to take the adjustment on the lighting back up to the standard 25. And let's see what it does. This may brighten it up too much. Yeah, way too much. So I'm going to split the difference somewhere in there. Let's let it re-render itself. Yeah, I think I like that. I, I, I would probably bump that a little bit more. And uh, this should be just about right. Yeah, kind of like that. Not a huge change again, but it's opened up this shadow from here. Um, it did put a tinge of color cast in this water. That's a little blue for my taste. You know, that water is down in the shadows, so that would account for it. Um, there it's pretty clean. But what I end up doing is adding the red back into here. So it's, uh, you know, sometimes on these softwares, it's a little bit of give and take. I don't believe I have masking ability on here, but I may, <laughs> don't, don't take it all to heart on this one because I may have a masking ability that I just haven't played enough around with to, to find out. Leave a comment below, by the way, if I do, or I'll leave a comment if I find it later. Okay, this is um, a morning sunrise um, that is, uh, was captured at Mono Lake in the Eastern Sierra at a point, place called Black Point. Uh, beautiful fall morning with some clouds swooping in. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna turn on adjust lighting, which I like that. And I don't know, let's turn on balance color. It may want to, you can see, I'm gonna put this back up to 50, which is standard. And I just, um, yeah, see, that's a little too yellow in those clouds. I don't remember them quite that yellow. So I'm going to bring that down a little. And we'll let that render out again. It's balancing color. And there, I like that a little bit better. Again, subtle, but uh, there seems to be a little more definition here um, to here. And by the way, I don't want to ignore these, but these are the preserved text. I'm not going to go through that. That's already been in um, version one of the software. Uh, the faces, we're not gonna work on that today. This is strictly landscape. Um, sharpen, most of these are TIFF images I'm showing you that have already been sharpened, so I'm not gonna play with that. Remove noise, if I see a little bit of noise, I will go in there and we'll, we'll see how it does. It seems to do a pretty, pretty fantastic job on reducing noise. Okay, three more. So next image, this is Keyhole Arch along the Big Sur coast. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna play with both the adjust lighting. And you can see I've already toned it down a little. Um, 25 would be the adjustment. And if I put it, let's, well, let's just put it up there. If I was to put it back to the standard at 25, you're gonna see it's way too light because it's gonna see this as a darker scene. Well, that's not the rendering attempt that I wanted. So where was I? I was right around in here. And uh, I'm gonna try balance color even though this was a warm shaft of sunlight coming in. And you can see I did bump from 50, the starting point up to 62. And I've got the color a little bit more the way I want it. I think I'm a little too dark. So I'm just gonna add back just a smidgen I wish it would do this in real time. Maybe it will down the line. You have to kind of wait till it renders. And um, again, I like that. You can see especially the difference in the lighting here, uh, the shaft of light in here. And there's more color in the shaft of light coming through the arch there than there, there is there. And if I wanted more, I could just bump the yellows up, but I don't want to skew it too much where it looks unrealistic. Okay, let's go on over to Namibia, Africa, the quiver trees. Oh, boy, you stand out here at night. You have to take an ultraviolet light and ultraviolet glasses and swoop around because this area is loaded with deadly scorpions and you don't want to get bit. 
Um, let me turn on the adjust lighting. You can see I've already adjusted it down from, I'm going to go to where default was at 25. Let me get it roughly to 25. You can see it tries to turn it to daylight. So I'm going to pull this way down to about six. And then the color balance, um, if you wanted to neutralize some of that blue out of the sky, I actually added a little bit of it. I can go back towards a little bit more neutral. Um, I think it gets too neutral in there. This would be more of a one for me to play around with and redo the raw processing now instead of trying to fix it all on just a bad processing job, which this is a bad processing job. But, you know, this was processed probably seven years ago, and that's where the software was seven years ago. Um, it's improved so much more now. Uh, so um, maybe on the lighting, I would come down a little bit more. I'm probably making too much. You know, blue is subjective. Uh, the, this has been an old thing in movies forever where they would just underexpose um, their movie film by two stops. And they would... Um, uh, throw a blue filter over everything. And that's how they would give the illusion tonight. Go back and watch some of the old uh, gun smokes, the ones they did in color, some of the old John Wayne movies, the ones they did in color. You'll see what I'm talking about. Um, you can Google it. It's um, That was a little Hollywood trick. I'm going to give it a little more blue, and then we're going to move on to the next one. Let it render. And it's balancing color. See, the thing is, it's got to go through and do everything. All right. Good enough for now, as they say. Um, last one, you could see, by the way, what flies out, let me see if I can get it to fly out. There it is. That's the autopilot. And if you go down the list, um, uh, it's going to say image selected. Uh, there's no subject detected or image loaded, excuse me, no subject detected because there's no person in this shot. Um, detected zero faces because again, no people in this shot. And, um, whoops, let me hover over there. Detected low noise and high blur. This one does need a sharpening done to it. Uh, calculated auto suggested values for the parameters within each filter. I would turn on sharpening for this. And I'm going to go to the lighting. It'll probably pick up my standard lighting. Okay. And I'm going to do um, the uh, color correction on this and leave it at standard. And let's let it go through. It's sharpening now. And look at that. It's um, It brightened it up. This is kind of dark and muddy. It's um, This was sort of dull down in here, and it's gotten this. I have to tell you, I, I am at a blank. I would have to go back and <laughs> read my, my um, IPTC template to tell you where this was even at. Um, I'm going to guess this was somewhere out in Arizona because of this butte and these buttes. But we have this little mountain of snow back in there. Could be Death Valley. I am not sure where I captured this scene. I apologize. Um, yeah, it's not even in my title where I captured it. But uh, you can see even this down in here got uh, a little more brought up to life. And then you can fiddle with it from there. So really... Um, I just got onto the software. I was so excited. I thought I'd get this video out for you guys so you can give it a try. If you want to order it, my uh, affiliate code is right down below there on the screen, or it's going to be in the show notes. You can utilize that at checkout and get 10% off uh, any Topaz product. I think Topaz is a fantastic company, and they just do great stuff, and they're constantly, constantly updating their AI models. AI is fantastic stuff, you guys. It um, doesn't work all the time, but I can tell you if you're in a hurry or you're trying to ballpark your images and you got the time, it's going to get you pretty darn close. Um, save you a lot of time just working strictly alone in Photoshop. So, hey, that's it. Um, I hope to, as I said last week, be doing these videos once a week unless I'm out on um, a workshop somewhere. And speaking of workshops, we'd love to have you join us. Go to my website, Don at Don Smith Photography. Click on the workshop link on the homepage. I've got a lot of other links there. And um, we'd love to see you. We're, we're filling up rapidly, uh, but we do have a couple of positions open in some of our workshops that we're doing. We're really looking forward to it. 
Um, okay, if you have any questions, email me, Don at Don Smith Photography. All that information is down below. And uh, leave some comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. I'll do my best to answer all of you. And uh, hey, until next time, get out there and get creative. Uh, it's so good for your soul. So till next week, you take care.